Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World. I hope you all are having a wonderful day today. And for today's vlog, I'm going to be sharing with you all my audio interview I did a while back with the lovely host, Miss Trinice of True Talks Podcast. I had a very great time talking with her on her show about my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, and so much more. So I don't want to hold you guys up any much longer. I want to get right into it. Check out the video. Make sure when you get done uh, to be sure to subscribe, comment, uh, share, and like all that other good junk. Um, but check it out. And hope you guys enjoy. All right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and let you know right now to my Houston listeners, I'm doing this one just for you. We got somebody at the Fifth Ward. She's throwing it up already. Look. Hey, child, Fifth Ward, get up, boys. <laughs> so my Texan listeners, you already hear us shouting you out. I have different in the building. And if this is yep. your first time hearing of her, this won't be your last. I promise you that. We about to get into a lot of the things that she has a devout interest in and actually devoting time into publishing uh, some of the topics that she absolutely holds near and dear to her heart. I've been blessed to actually read her first book. And I tell you, man, it is nothing to sleep on. Y'all going to want to get this book as soon as you hear this discussion. I'm not going to talk as much. Y'all know I've been shortening my intro because I keep you because I love the folks that I invite onto this show. But different, I want to officially welcome you to True Talks Podcast. How are you? Very well, Queen. Thank you so much for having me, T. And what's up to everybody out there? It's your girl, Different. Yes, that's my name, Different. So D-I-F-E-R-N-T. And I'm just so glad and grateful for you having me on your show today. Plan to have a good time to rock out with you. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do this. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, dang, that can't be her real name, but that would be so sweet if it is. So do you know the inspo behind that? Yeah, I was suffering through an identity crisis. <laughs> I needed a name. <laughs> well, hey. yeah, so I was just, you know, one of those people, you know, who came up with an unusual name. And as, as far as telling you my name, don't expect to. I, I like privacy, so different is the name you get. But uh, just long story short, you know, I was just going through an identity crisis. You know, who am I? What does my name mean? And so looking up all night online and checking up, seeing, you know, the definition of my name, couldn't find it. I came up with this, you know, different from all the rest. Hey, and it works. Every, I love everybody it. says they're different, but you got to show and tell how. And I don't tell people how different I am. I just let, let it speak for itself, let my org speak for itself, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell them. It's definitely speaking. So I mentioned y'all that she's published her first book. It is titled, <laughs> What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift Different? Like, mm -hmm. man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> For starters, I was taken aback by the fact that it's less words and more imagery. And mm -hmm. I love that about this because it's the imagery that's it's speaking. Yeah, mm -hmm. when people say, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, this is really one of those books that's the proof in the pudding for that. Like, you are going to get the meaning of it. And especially coming out of 2020, we in 2021, yes, we're still facing some of the issues that were going on back then, still prevalent. Uh, we still got this COVID situation going on, a new variant. And we still have racial tension. It may not feel like it to some that were, you know, heavily involved last year. But to those who still rock the skin, it's still a problem. Um, and what if addresses a lot of those controversial topics that we spent a lot of time alone with last year? Tell us, what was your thought process in creating this publication? Um, well, to tell you that, I got to take it all the way back to the year 1990. Take it back young. then. Take it back. No, I just, just need <laughs> you guys just to go back so y'all understand what different is, who I am, and, and what I'm about, and why this book came to be. I got to take you back to, you know, where, where it all began for me in my childhood. Um, growing up in Houston, you know, um, I had a pretty good upbringing up until the time I was 11. Then, you know, fell on hard times with me and uh, my family to the point to where we ended up homeless for around three years, you know, straight and living basically pillow to post, you know, everywhere, you name it, we stayed. And, and up until the time I was 14, then I was placed in, secretly placed in foster care by a relative. And for the first six months, and being in the system with nobody knowing where I was, me trying to get home, but yet not knowing anybody's contact number. Mind you, this is right before, you know, iPad and all that exploded. And so I didn't know anybody's number. And, you know, what I found out was 
that if you stay, if kids who age out of care, you know, by the time they were 18, the state of Texas would pay for their tuition fee waiver, you know, full, you know, full ride, no, no paybacks included. And so right then and there, you know, a light bulb went off in my head and, you know, being in the streets, you know, for so long, and you know, with those hustles, I just decided, you know, to elevate my book smarts and, you know, with my street smarts, I, you know, thought to elevate my book smarts and, and ended up duking out those four years in college, in, excuse me, in CPS to go to college. And wow. so by the time I aged out, um, you know, I ended up going to Sam Houston State University and did another four years there and became a member of Phi Chi Theta Business Fraternity. I started my own student organizations titled uh, Pay It Forward. I graduated, you know, with my BA in international business. I got two minors in business communications and economics. And then I have my master's degree in entrepreneurship. And then I'm also a Texas real estate agent. And so even though I had a tough upbringing, you know, it was part of God's plan because, you know, through that tragedy, you know, the trial and tribulation, you know, something beautiful came out of it. And so even with such, you know, accomplishments and, and, and achievements that I had under my belt, going up into my adulthood, you know, I had demons and issues to deal with, you know, from my childhood that spilled over into my adulthood. Um, for instance, you know, being very off-putting, uh, just not trusting anybody. And, and one of the main things, you know, I had an issue was, you know, sabotaging every good opportunity that came my way. Um, coming up, you know, it may sound crazy to you, but I know somebody out there, and maybe you, even you, you can relate to this, but um, chaos, it seemed normal to me, you know? And when I got placed in foster care, I actually got placed in really good, nice homes in, in, in school districts and, and was just, you know, taking out a completely different new situation and it was, I wasn't used to it. Mm -hmm. And back then, understanding myself now, back then, you know, for me, it was just too good to be true. And I didn't, you know, trust that it was going to last longer. So I'd rather, you know, be the captain of my own ship and, and decide when to sink the ship. And so I was sabotage and, and then get kicked out of, you know, foster homes and, you know, just mess up relationships and push people away. And, you know, nobody would want to deal with me. And I was just known as that problem child. And those type of issues spilled over into my adulthood to where, again, I had all these achievements and accomplishments under my belt, but I was still, you know, I wasn't happy. I was often depressed. I was squandering opportunities that I had, you know, coming my way. And it was just, it was one opportunity that I had that could just, that would have just thrusted me, you know, 10 years forward. But however, you know, again, letting those demons take over in the back of my mind, telling me, you know, I'm not worthy of it. I don't deserve it. Oh, they're not going to like you. You're too ghetto. You're too country. And so I, I had a meeting with somebody who was well connected and just, you know, like I said, could have just took me from the back to the front, if you will. And I purposely, you know, showed up late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in their mouth. And to this day, even though, you know, I moved forward and, and still, you know, gained a, a couple of more notches under my belt of accomplishments, I, to this day, I regret that. I wish I could take that back, you know, it's been about going on seven years now since that happened. I still regret that. But it was with that issue, you know, I still had other, you know, things that come along, but it was with that, you know, that I had to deal with for so long, forced me to, you know, face the ugly truth about myself and, you know, face the fact that I needed to get my shit together and go fix my issues, go fix whatever, you know, face mommy and daddy issues, if you will, that you had when you come up and, and that stops you in your adulthood. I went and fixed it. So I, I dismissed that notion that, you know, black people don't do therapy, if you will. Coming up for me, uh, I came up in, you know, a setting to where, you know, you were taught what goes on in this house stays in this house. You know what I mean? And yeah. so prime example would be if somebody touched you and you could even have the courage to muster up the courage to come and tell somebody. And even if you did, you know, more than half of the time, it would just get overlooked. It would get looked the other way. And so those type of issues, you know, you were just made to feel, don't talk about it, you bottled it up, you know, felt ashamed about it. And so those type of issues, you know, when you're taught in, in that setting in your childhood and it comes up into your adulthood, you know, of course you're going to, you know, dismiss the fact that, hey, you need to fix your issues. But it wasn't until, you know, those, those big opportunities that I was squandering 
you know, forced me to realize, you know, it was me that was, you know, messing up and needed to fix it. It wasn't my fault what I went through, you know, but it was my problem. Mm-hmm. And it was on me as an adult to go and fix it. And so with doing that, um, I'm proud and happy to say I've been in therapy now for two years consecutively. Congrats, <laughs> um, congrats. Yeah, we yeah, celebrate and, that and, on this show. Yeah, yeah. And mental health is very important for me because it saved my life. And I, I just want to be a, a light of beacon for others, especially in our community, the Black community, and just be an example of what, you know, getting mentally healthy can do for you. You know, going, you know, seek help when your mental is off balance. This is what it can do for you. And so um, with being in therapy and talking with my therapist, who's become a great mentor over time, he, you know, talking with them has taught me and, and helped me um, and encouraged me to channel my negative, you know, energy into positive ones. And, and one of those outlets that he encouraged me to reignite was writing and journaling, you know, one of my passions I had coming up. And so take it back to late. May 25th, early June 2020, the death of George Floyd happened, and um, I'm from Houston, the same place he's from, from Fifth Ward, but he's from Third Ward. I've actually spent some time, you know, as a childhood, like I said, we moved around a lot, and so I spent, you know, fourth and fifth grade year in Third Ward. And so when his death occurred, of course, I wanted to get involved and have my voice heard and you know, go march and protest, and I even wanted to take my, my nine-year-old nephew with me. And so that he can understand what was going on. However, I felt that, you know, when the time came to go to his funeral, I couldn't do so because it wasn't that I I caught cold feet or anything. It just, I felt something deeper in my heart telling me, I want my voice to last longer just than just in this moment of time. I want my voice to be heard long after I'm gone. And so being a person that, like I said, I'm not religious at you know, I, I don't claim any religious, but I'm very, you know, spiritually in tune. I, I love being along with God and praying and meditating and, and asking for the spirit, spirit of discernment, if you will. And in doing so, over time, you know, he would just send me little messages, you know, dreams and talking with people. And, and, and also, again, with journaling and writing being a hobby, you know, one day I'm just doodling and writing out, you know, questions, what if, you know, what if this, what if that, you know, one day from the next day, just writing, and, and, you know, slowly but surely it started to turn into something, you know, bigger than what I was expecting it to be, and before I knew it, I had a book, you know, wow. titled What If, The Controversial Paradigm Shift. Fast forward it to from June 2020 is when I started, you know, writing the book, and I finished it in June, excuse me, December 2020, I contacted a lawyer and I uh, got with her. She read the, my uh, manuscript and she got back with me. She's like, I love it. I think it's going to do well. I just got one question for you. And she's like, well, what's the name of your business? I'm like, um, what if? A controversial paradigm shift. She's like, uh, huh? I'm like, she's like, I don't think you understand. You know, uh, you have to have a, a, a LLC in order to sell the product to the public. So therefore, they don't come out of your personal assets. They can only sue for your business-wise. Mm-hmm. And so right then, I had to hit the fan running. You know, one thing about life, it'll teach you, you know, just when you think you got a handle on it, comes through and knock you off a horse and reminds you, you don't know a damn thing. And so, <laughs> yeah, so true. From, December, yeah, from December to March, I had to, you know, learn everything. It wasn't my plan. Even though I have a master's degree in entrepreneurship, it wasn't my plan to, you know, start my business off this way or, or at this time. It just was God's plan. If you will, that's all I could say. Um, and so December to March 2021, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm praying, I'm meditating. I'm asking God, you know, what should my business should be about? It's not just about the book anymore. It's more than that. And so, like I said, being spiritually in tune and talking with God and meditating with him, that's what Third Eye Entertainment LLC was born. You know, when you're spiritually in tune with your third eye, you're allowed to, you know, hear what God is telling you and listening from your heart and not your mind. If you will. Yeah. And that's so gold. that's gold right there. They liquid gold, if you will, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Verbal gold. <laughs> yeah, so Third Eye Entertainment, or Third Eye ENT for short, is a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through our products and services that educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. We provide motivational speaking services. We also provide written and video material that speaks on uh, taboo subjects that are often swept under the rug, including um 
social injustice, systemic racism. Uh, we also talk about issues such as gender rights, voters rights, LGBTQ issues. Um, what else? Uh, child advocacy, we talk about sex trafficking, mental health, suicide prevention, anything that's considered taboo or, or something that needs to be talked about, you name it, we, we're going to address it because it brings social awareness to society and it makes you think and sparks that conversation that we all need to bring that systemic change. I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. I want to talk about systemic change for once. Yeah. And yeah. so that's our creed striving to bring social awareness to society through our products and services that educates, motivates, and inspires at once. But our motto is in order for those, it is our belief that in order for those to obtain guaranteed success, one must manifest and speak into existence what it is that they believe in their hearts that they are meant to have in life. Secondly, they must plan for what it is that they want to achieve in life. And third, they must plan, or excuse me, prepare for what it is that they are about to receive. So therefore, our motto at Third IENT is manifest, plan, and prepare. Got you. Yeah, that, that's great right there. Because a lot of people get stuck on the planning or the idea of it and don't reach those other steps. And sometimes yeah, it's not a lack of intellect or a lack of resource. Sometimes it's just a lack of self-confidence or some of the things that you've mentioned that you've worked through those many blockages that we have through experience up until that point of realization that hey this is something we want to do but why is it so difficult for me as an individual um but before we move on to that because i had questions that you're tapping on the answer of now um i asked you initially some version of what's your inspiration so inspiration uh, okay so in well you've answered it yeah, no, you've oh, okay. answered it, but my Sorry. thing is like every artist gets some version of that question, right? But my reason for asking you that, and you've answered it, um, was because I read a little bit about your your story, and I didn't get your story in your book. So I was like, how is what she's been through correlating with what she's writing about, or what was the inspiration for this? Because most times when people publish first, it's normally a memoir or something. Did yeah that they can relate to they write what they know and so i was very yeah, I was intrigued the person <laughs> I, I, and that's my plan i got i'm also working on book two and that's going to be my memoirs and so with doing my research with with writing a book and i also manifested and said a long time ago when i was 13 that i was going to write a book about myself if you will right. however you know doing my research and like you said everybody's first book wants to be about them and what they've been through and, and well everybody's got a story to tell and the truth is don't nobody give a damn don't nobody care Everybody's got that sad story to tell. And so if you're really trying to have a number one bestseller, which that's what my my goal is, is as well as to, to spread the message of social awareness, I'm I'm not just I don't just want to write a, a, a first book about myself so I can just say, Oh, I wrote a book. I'm writing to have a bestseller. So I got a plan in mind. And so therefore, with that thinking, I, I had to write a book that was universal, that's on a social issue that people care about, and write it in a way that's gonna catch people's attention, whether it's good or bad. Right. Secondly, well, once I have that platform, then I can work on talking about myself and, and, and I won't have to worry about putting myself out there. People will come to me and want to find out about me. Yeah. So you're gonna, you gonna make them care make yeah. it come to me i don't you gotta know? go to you yeah, gotta come to me so that's yeah. that's my my plan yeah and so i totally yeah i thought i was going to do that too but the plan is you know get the people's attention to you with something that's universal and that everybody cares about not just you right and then once you got you know once you got the attention then you can you can hit them with the other agendas that you have not yeah. hidden agendas, but the other agendas you have. Right. But, oh, trust me, I definitely, I have other two other books I plan on writing. I figured that you had. And a self-help. Oh, yeah. I I'm, figured I'm, that you had because one. listening now to that your I have story. Now that I have a going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I figured that you had because listening to your story, you know, the inspiration behind a lot of people's memoirs is actually teaching people how to get out of circumstances that they found themselves yeah. into. So it's not a criticism to anybody who's taking that approach. We understand exactly. that no, there's a no. need for it, but I knew that your objective was slightly different because not only was the book, again, as it's labeled, what if a controversial paradigm, it was questioning some of the social norms we experienced, but it also offered ways to get out of it. Um, and there wasn't any mention of some of the things that you uh, talk about you went through. And so I was like, she's probably going to share that later on in life. But then 
you look at your entertainment, your LLC is named Third Eye. So I'm like, okay, she done did some inner work somewhere along the line, then cleared yeah, the, those energies, you know, and now she's like really ready to take this into something way more. What is that more? I don't know. So I'm like, I'm really looking forward to asking her that question to see, okay, what do you got coming down a pipeline if you want to share a little bit? Um, so I'm excited because I really enjoyed the book and I am I know I'm probably going to enjoy your memoir as well. Um, but in terms of this book, I love what you said a little while ago about have, having the discussion about systemic racism but not becoming fixated on that because mm -hmm. we've had years where the, it's been discussed. I, mm -hmm. I refuse to believe that anyone is ignorant to this topic now. If it is, it's willful. Yeah, if it is, yeah. it's willful ignorance, you know, mm -hmm. because it's been covered time and time again throughout history. And even if no one was talking about it, you've definitely had clear cut depictions of it enough to understand it if you pursued that information. But Very I love true. that you're yeah. transitioning into systemic change. What does that exactly. look like for you? You do hint at it in your book, but what specifically would make you go, okay, we're at the cusp of receiving the type of changes needed? That comes from first off taking a first step and in and, and acknowledgement and then, you know, having the, the courage and, and the maturity as well and open mindedness to have a conversation about, you know, the grimy situations that that happen in society, you know, the uncomfortable truth that's still going on in society. And then secondly, finding common ground, you know, within one another and going from there. You know, finding common ground and working from there in my theory, creates, you know, the systemic change over time. I am well aware that, you know, change doesn't come overnight and it doesn't just happen with one person. It takes time and it takes more than one voice being heard. What if a controversial paradigm shift? This book is intended for a mature audience only. It's, it's had, it's contained sensitive and explicit content. It's written to inform and encourage constant and thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. It's done through graphic but provocative illustrations, and it entails on controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African American community. And the way that I've set this up is in four main paradigms: historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And within these four main paradigms, there are there are sub paradigms. And in those sub paradigms, I'm asking certain questions such as, you know, what if in 1619s Africans started dealing in slave trading? 1619 was the actual year Englishmen started dealing in slave trading where they, they, they kidnapped the first African and brought them on a slave ship, you know, to America. So basically just doing a race role reversal and asking the question, what if in 1619s Africans started dealing in slave trading? We're in they kidnapped millions of English women, men, and children and brought them on slave ships to America. And so I ask those type of questions within those paradigms. Uh, the, situ the questions that I ask are very true. There's nothing in the book that's a lie. They each include references. Um, only difference is, it's just asking what if this happened to white people instead of black people. And again, the purpose of this book is to, the main purpose, if you will, is to simulate you know, the conversations about, you know, systemic justice and racism in America so that we can ultimately come up with ways that create systemic change. Um, it also, it, it opens in one eye, if you will, or rings their bell uh, about, you know, showing or teaching or encouraging, you know, compassion for one another and, and just being, you know, loving and kindness, you know, for one another because we're all one and the same. We're human. And so, and we're all going through, you know, something in our personal life. We're all struggling with something, you know, be it, you know, our personal identities, our finances, relationship, uh, sexual identity, anything, you know, our weight, anything. And so let's, you know, practice love and kindness to one another because you never know what the next person is going through. And so even though I have this book set up to, but the illustrations are very uncomfortable, the questions are uncomfortable, the way that I have asked them are raw and uncut. Um, but at the end of the day, it is basically stimulating, you know, the question, you know, what if, yes, this is true, all this happened, but what if this can happen as well? You know, what if we all just come together and just take that time to, you know, at least try to talk about it? I'm well aware, again, that it may go nowhere fast, but nothing beats a failure but a try. 
And so this is my try, if you will. And so whether if it goes nowhere fast, nobody can say I didn't try or that yeah. I wasn't trying. But at the very least, your, your, your steps to seeing that systemic change is definitely accountability. So you feel like there's a lack of acknowledgement despite definitely despite the pictures of you of like unit unity occurring widespread and um people now starting to be a little bit more vocal and you are starting to see you know white allies take a place yeah. in in front of certain things a little more adamantly but there's still an overarching mm-hmm. lack of accountability on a national and universal scale is what you're getting at mm-hmm. Gotcha. And then the second piece is once we reach that, it'll be it'll open doors to acceptability in it and a true inclusiveness that we've lacked. So we'll be able to have these conversations when we talk about mental health. It won't be limited to just black or brown folks lacking this or not being in support of. It'll be this was my struggle here as an Arab. This was my struggle here as a as exactly. a person of, of, of any ethnicity. And here's how we relate. And now we can get to that spiritual component of before any of the things that we see, we are alike in spirit, you know. Amen. So that's the goal. And I, I, I support that 100 percent. But that that kind of gave me a literal definition of what you're getting at when you talk about manifesting uh, in your third eye entertainment and doing this through different ways so you didn't really touch on this but like i said i was reading up on you (laughs) and i know you like to travel and i know that you know you consider yourself a foodie and those are some of the things that you enjoy abroad and also you touched on like health and wellness and like financial literacy so this is definitely that's a part of third eye and as well Uh, my entertainment side um, before the pandemic and, and, and in the beginning of the pandemic, before I knew how serious it was, I was traveling extensively. That was the first little manifestation I, I learned um, coming up. And I told myself when I was good, I was going to travel. And so when I was in college, I got the opportunity and I studied abroad in Korea, in South Korea. That's and so dope. then that opportunity, I got to go to eight other countries and then just took off from there. And, yep. and so... Well, part of my, my vision statement at Third Eye NFT and with the, a big part of manifestation uh, and, and the reason why with the midst of, you know, the 2020 pandemic and what it taught us is that life is too short and tomorrow is not promised. And so, again, for anybody out there who feels in their heart and believes in their heart that they're meant for greatness and they're destined for greatness and they, they're supposed to be living that good life, then it's time, you know, to reprogram your mind. Get your heart and your mind together and, 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 and do what you got to do, whether it's being going and fixing, you know, your inner issues or things that affected you in your past, go and do that and go get what's yours. And so I try to tell my audience, you know, with reprogramming your mind, have that mindset that, you know, you're trying to get rich during the pandemic or die trying. I also, you know, tell everybody that I know, you know, you either trying to have that come up like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D. There is uh. no- <laughs> me, I'm working on that come up. I'm on Look, my come up right See, now. that's Houston talking. So, Listen, y'all have up. Beyonce, y'all got Tobe, y'all got folks that already <laughs> like to rename <laughs> themselves. Look, yeah, different. Yeah, different is different. different. Look, now they yeah. got different. Now, now they got different too. <laughs> that's Houston. That's Houston talking right there. All the, the show, way. So, but I, I love that so, though. I love that and I enjoy hearing plan it. And prepare. And I tell you that uh, Trinise, anybody out there listening, I'm a living witness to it. it. It's true. It's real. The power of the tongue, what you speak out of your mouth comes to life. And so get all that negativity, all this, I can't do this. It'll never happen. It won't happen because I did this. I did that. Shut all that down and reprogram your mind and, and go and, and, and go from there. For me, I, I, it was through writing and, and journaling. I started writing out little affirmations or I can't do this. I will do this. I will be a millionaire by this. I will write this book. The power of manifestation is, is real, y'all, and it's true. And so whatever it is that you believe that you meant to have in life, you have to manifest it, first of all. Believe it and speak it into existence like no other. Yeah. Second of all, you got to plan it out. You have to plan for whatever it is that you want in life. Third of all, you got to prepare for it. Don't don't be planned for it and then and, and don't have, you know, be prepared for what's about to come. Except with all this that you're praying for and asking for, except the good and the bad, be prepared for it. So that's what I say when I say prepare for what you are about to receive. Be mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, 
financially, be prepared for whatever it is that you are about to receive. And so manifest, plan, prepare. Yeah, that's, that's you know, I don't know if you're if you're a fan of India, I read, but I definitely am a fan I love of her. India. And and I was listening yeah, to. My legs, I'm on my India. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, my yeah, sometimes I don't. <laughs> I was hey. just waiting here. I saved like two weeks ago. <laughs> Listen, I live for some India. I read, but you know what I'm getting at is. Uh, she got a new song out too, girl. Oh yeah, I look. Yeah. I know everything that drop of hers. You had to do with everything, girl. <laughs> Come on, girl. But I was listening I to her uh, acoustic session on Kate McKelly's uh, series XDM Heart and Soul. And uh, okay. one thing that she mentioned was like, she said, never, I had to write this down because it's getting at what you just, what you just mentioned about the prepare piece. Never mm-hmm. ask God for something that you're not ready to receive. Exactly. And it's like, sometimes that's confusing the people who really, you know, maybe provided the vision because I feel like I've definitely been providing vision, uh, provided vision over things that don't match mm-hmm. my environment. But it's like, where in that environment would you be ready to receive it if He gave it to you? And that's the mindset that I've shifted into because it's like sometimes you gotta make physical room for things to happen. Mm-hmm. You can't keep making that environment work and expecting a different thing to come out of it. Exactly. Yes, sometimes, sometimes you have to make the best out of the circumstance. But then when you reach a point where you've exhausted everything that you can do within that environment and you know it's requiring for you to go elsewhere, you got to be unafraid to take that jump. You got to be unafraid to take that big leap, you know? That's exactly. Yeah, and so that, when you were talking about it, it was just like, you know, yeah, that manifesting piece is is big, it's major. And I think that, you know, um, a lot of people are in tune with the spirit and understand how it moves you. Sometimes it don't make sense. I've heard so many success stories similar to what I feel like I'm going to hear just a year from now with you and that people, <laughs> people felt like they were called to just uproot everything about themselves and go to another state or country. And it has worked out so beautifully for them and they didn't have a game plan. They left with what they had. And it's just yeah. because they were responding to something bigger than them that they had no control of and they just mm-hmm. was obedient. And so if if you are listening and you feel like you know, you sit in a season of not only confusion, but maybe disappointment, discouragement, whatever. Do the inner work, man. Start writing things down. Now, I am, I'm spiritual, but I'm also religious. I identify as a Christian. Y'all know that. Um, but hey, that's wrong, but I yeah. have nothing against religious beliefs, and I never will ever disrespect anybody's religious belief. Just yeah. don't disrespect mine. That's just how right. I am. I yeah. was raised actually in the church house, and just as growing up, for me, it, it just... When I, when I got religious, it became overrated. I was living for people and not for God. And yeah. so for me, I had to remove the religious side in order to get closer to God. Yeah. So, and we definitely, we definitely that. had that same, that. that same experience too. That. Oh yeah. Ain't, ain't yeah, nothing because wrong with it's, being, you know, in a church house and yeah. nothing wrong with that at all. Now I'm not devout. Like I'm not following in there every Sunday, but, and I don't, I don't ain't apologize for that, you know? And then also, yeah. I also listen to several sermons, you know, I'm not, I'm yeah. not in person now because of this COVID situation, but I listen to several sermons throughout the week, yeah. you know, I'm that way it, ain't, too. it ain't just Sundays, but you know, what I'm getting at is like, because people on this podcast have heard me say many times that I still, even having been baptized and all, I feel like religion I is what baptized. you have to, yeah, I mean, it's like religion, you have <laughs> to work with people. Look at my baptismal people. certificate right now. <laughs> yeah, what, I, what I'm saying is like, with religion, you have to work with people to get to God, but with spirituality, he's readily mm-hmm. available to you with a sincere heart. And so I, you know, I do have that, that always, you know, holding over me, but to the people who, who do identify, you know, as Christian or even just read the Bible and don't, you know, Habakkuk 2 and 2 speak about writing that vision and making it plain. And so some things do align, I think, because of the spiritual component of that. No matter how people feed it to you, that's just the Mm -hmm. way it's supposed to be. And that's the way that you're encouraged. And if anything that you identify as uplifts and and, um, holds you to the highest uh, level of accountability and and puts you in a position of, of greater then it's all good, no matter what religion that is. And so I just ask that you get in tune with the spirit so you can hear what is meant for you. Don't don't get set on the circumstance, the environment, or people around you. And to to diff, to different point about speaking things into existence, she waving her hands. Y'all can't see this, but she waving her hands. Don't start yeah. shouting on me now, cause I know how I used to be paying some get churches that Bible, up now. That Bible, girl. Get to put that church music on, and we get the fellowship up in here. But look, you know, <laughs> like what Different was mentioning about, you know, manifesting and preparing, um, and the power of the tongue. 
And I want to do want, do want to speak on that before we move on to one other thing and then we'll sum this interview up because I ain't gonna hold y'all long. But the power of the tongue, sometimes it's not what you're speaking over yourself or what you agree with somebody else on about you. So be cautious of that. You know, when people are speaking on you and it's not it's not, you know, good, it's ill intent, don't don't touch and agree on that. Even if you don't correct that person, if you're not one of those people that's boisterous or bold and, and don't feel comfortable correcting that person. Don't ever touch and agree on that. Let them have that for themselves. If, you, if you're not comfortable speaking up, let them have that for themselves, but don't ever agree with them on that because the power of your tongue can limit you. And what you're in agreement with is what you align yourself to become subliminally without even knowing. You'll start taking measures and steps in ways that God may not have intended for you to do just because that person thought it was best for you to do it. Have your way in that. Consult with God first. And I feel like that'll align you with where you're supposed to be. So, yeah. It's power in the tongue. What you say and what you profess for yourself means something, but also be cautious of the people you're around so that you can surround yourself by people who are going to speak in, speak life into you and not death. And don't agree on that crap when there's something negative, you know. You'll get there. I just here to encourage you guys because I know that we're still in this pandemic. It's 2021. We were all, you know, kind of celebratory in the beginning of this year just to have a fresh start, what feels like a renewal. But we're still here. We're losing people in the midst of this trial. And so I just want to take this opportunity to encourage anybody listening to let difference living a testimony to be an example of what's possible. If you have the opportunity to go and check her out, please do so different. I want you to plug your your Instagrams and socials or wherever. Yeah, girl. I know different world, different world dot net is available to you guys. And that's spelled the way she said, uh, D-I-F-E-R ntsworld.net but tell them about your socials yeah the main one i'm on right now is facebook uh if you guys want to add me go to type in th the number three r d l l c e y e and uh, you'll you'll see other our, our other social media handles um, we are having a pre-sale starting next week with our book what if a controversial paradigm shift again just go to my website differenceworld.net also, I must note, in association with the book, we do sell other merchandise, including apparel and other uh, sorts. Uh, however, they will not be available during our pre-sale. They'll we be available maybe the second or third week of September. And so, um, just want to note that as well. <laughs> got you, got yeah. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, y'all heard it here first. Tap in with my girl, Different. Houston, stand up. Y'all think she represented y'all well, man. Drop For it in sure. the comments. Awesome. Leave me a message at True Talks Podcast at yahoo.com. Let me know what you thought of this episode. But y'all, be sure you get in on this pre sale. I'm telling you, it's great. Y'all know I don't bring y'all nothing but heat. So tap in with different. And like I always leave you guys, y'all can follow me on my socials at True Talks Podcast. I don't know why I said socials, y'all. It's only Instagram at True Talks Podcast. And uh, be blessed in every day that God gives you. Your life is full of purpose. Until next time, deuces. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed my listening to my audio interview uh, with the lovely host, Miss Trenise of True Talks Podcast. We had a very good time, as you see, uh, talking about my new book, dun, da, da, da. What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, which is available on my website at differenceworld.net. It's also available on Amazon on paperback and ebook. So if you feel more comfortable going to Amazon, head on over and get your copy there. But I'm going to be real with you. It's very much more um, uh, expensive on Amazon. So if you go to my website, you'll get the better deal. But also be advised that this book does come with a disclaimer. It is intended for a mature audience only. So if you can't take this type of heat, then don't bother coming to this kitchen. Grown folks only type of conversation here. Yeah. So with that being said, um, what else I got for you guys? I have so much more coming up. Uh, just stay tuned. Be sure, again, to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button so that you guys can get those alerts whenever I post my new videos. I post uh, just about everything, you know, at Third Eye Entertainment. We try to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we try to educate, motivate, and entertain you all uh, at once. So, um, again, with that being said, you know, be sure to share your insights and what you guys want me to talk about and what you guys want me to share in regards to my travel adventures. I know I just posted a while back um, 
my my Peru, my adventures in Peru, and I got a new one coming uh, with a trip to the Bahamas. Um, so be sure to, you know, interact with me, you guys. I definitely want to hear you guys' thoughts and your opinions and as well as your experiences. If you guys have gotten in trouble or you guys got some things going on that's similar to mine, let me know. Uh, this is what it is, you know, when you come to Difference World, you come and learn. So as I share my world with you guys, I want you guys to do the same with me. So uh, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed watching this um, vlog uh, and stay tuned for the next one. Again, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe this video. I'm just going to start it with it, man, but I can feel it now. You know, a year from now, um, it's going to be a different tone now. I'm going to have so many more people, you know, tuned in. And so uh, we're just getting started with this, you guys, and I'm learning as I go and I'm getting better and better with this and so anybody out there um, that's that's having that you know feelings of thoughts of wanting to start their own YouTube channel go for it <laughs> don't don't wait any longer you know again whatever it is in life you have to manifest plan and prepare for it and it will surely come to you so with that being said difference world come and learn peace What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slaves trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Illustrations by Anastasia Arnold. Coming August 2021. Go to differenceworld.net.